This video is a bit of a departure for me because instead of looking at the latest technology, I'm going way back and looking at the 8-track tape cartridge system. I'm going to have a look at the technology behind the 8-track, see how it operates, and I'm also going to have a look at what happens when it goes wrong and how you go about repairing that. I'm going to have a listen to some of them because it's over 35 years ago since I heard one of these. I've got no idea how good or bad they sound. I'm going to see if there's any point in collecting 8-tracks, but most exciting of all, I'm going to be unboxing an 8-track recorder that's been sat unused, brand new, in its box since the day it was made nearly 40 years ago. I suppose you might be asking why, and that's a legitimate question. The reason is because in the UK, the 8-track never really made that much of an impact. A few people had it in their cars in the 70s, but they replaced it pretty quickly. My father has one with all of two cartridges. I can't really remember the 8-track, so I wanted to go back and find out for myself how good or bad it really was. All I remember are people ridiculing it, like young MC. And it's perhaps slightly ironic that the album is on cassette. Let's take a look at a typical 8-track. This is ABBA's greatest hits. Pretty early on in their career, there aren't that many hits on it really when you look at the track listing. Notice at the bottom here though, we've got four programs. Now obviously the cartridge is pretty chunky and that was one of the issues with 8-track, not very portable really. But the tape inside is a quarter of an inch. The way that those tracks are split up are into those four programs, one to four, top to bottom. Now you think, where does the 8-track come from? Well the reason is because each of those four programs is split into two. That's your 8-tracks. Stereo, left and right stereo for four different programs. I know there's quad eight tracks but we're not going to go into that right now so inside an eight track the tape is on a reel about 11 and a half minutes usually for an album an 11 and a half minute reel that just it goes around continuously from the middle it pulls the tape goes around the left and goes back on the outside of the reel again the way it works is like this it pulls it from the middle spins in this direction the tape goes around the front across the spongy bit around that wheel and then back up onto the outside of the reel. Therefore, you can't rewind it, as you can see what happens when you twist it the other way. So you can't rewind eight tracks, although you can fast forward them if you've got one of those buttons. Now this bit of metal that comes across the bottom here, that's what changes the tracks. So when a full loop's been attained, it hits that metal bit, drops it down to the next track. Now I'll show you how that works inside this player that I've taken apart. So the cartridge goes in the front, Notice it jumps straight to the next program when it goes past the metal strip, but if you want you can press that selector button yourself to jump between programs. Now you can't get to the exact track you want because of course each of those programs has three or four tracks on it, you have to wait for the one you want to come round. Now looking at the playheads here, notice the metal one at the bottom, that's the one that jumps the tracks when it hits the metal strip, but look at the top there, that's the playhead. Look how far it goes inside the cartridge when I push the cartridge in. It pushes the tape right against that piece of sponge. Now when I press the selector button, you can see the tape head move down to the individual programs. Now when it comes to buying 8-track cartridges, for me in the UK i found the best place has been eBay. There aren't any second-hand shops around me that stock these. Of course most of them died out in the 70s so you can kind of understand it. There's an awful lot of dross on there, a lot of country and western easy listing, Elvis compilations, things like that. Very few contemporary pop acts. However, the 8-track did live into the 80s and you can get some later 80s albums that you really wouldn't expect to find on 8-track. And some of these reach pretty high prices. Now I have managed to get one of the later 8-tracks, these were only available mail order I think. This is Michael Jackson's Thriller of course, the first time I've ever owned this album believe it or not. Now an 8-track cartridge tape is twice the thickness of a compact cassette tape and runs at twice the speed. So at one point they did sound better, but the compact cassette improved technology over time and ended up sounding better than the 8-track. Now one thing about 8-track, with it having that loop inside of tape, the programs have to be rearranged to fit on the tape. Because if you imagine a 10 minute loop, not all tracks are the same length. So for example, if you look at Michael Jackson's Thriller, the way the album split up, you'll find that there's some tracks, there's one track here, Pretty Young Thing, that split, it says beginning and conclusion. And the way that works is the track fades out, there's a big clunk when the head moves down and then it comes back in again. Now if you also look at the last two tracks here, Beat It and Thriller, those are on the 8-track as the last two tracks on the album, but the official album, according to Wikipedia, ends up in Pretty Young Thing and Lady In My Life. So the tracks are completely rearranged on the 8-track. 
Now this video has had a few false starts, it's taken me six months to put together. Originally I got hold of this 8-track player, very simple device which I showed you the inside of before. It was made in 1976 and it had been in its box ever since then. However, I couldn't get the audio to work properly. I had this DIN plug on the back, converted it to phonos. It was too quiet. I put a preamp on it. It was still too quiet. It went in the bin. I then decided I'd get a recorder instead of top of the range one. So I had a look for one of those. A lot of people don't know that you can get recordable eight track cartridges and you can record your own tracks onto them. After much searching, I found the Pioneer HR99. Now this is recognized as one of the best playback machines from the 8-track era. It's shown in a 1975-76 Pioneer brochure. Now it's been in its box ever since it was made, apart from the time when the chap that sold it to me, who's in Spain, took it out of the box to replace the belt in it, because of course belts perish on old tape machines. But other than that, nobody's touched this. So let's have a look what you get. Well here's all the things you get inside the box. You get the photos, the instruction booklet, there's some tape head cleaning sticks here, quite long ones, because you have to reach inside the back of the machine with the door open. And it also comes with some of that fluid that you put on the end of those uh, Q-tip type things to clean it. However, because of the time it's been in the box, that has evaporated. Now lifting it out of the box, I can feel it's got a nice 1970s weight to it. Very solid, not at all like modern equipment. As far as I know, I might be unboxing the only box one of these in the world, which is pretty exciting. The label on the top here, this piece of card, again tells me I need to keep those heads clean, so that's something they find quite important. On the back, it's got the standard international plug, but it's got the ability to change the voltage to the UK, which is one reason I chose this particular model. It doesn't seem like there were many 8-track home players sold in the UK. Now looking at the machine itself, it's an absolutely gorgeous piece of technology. Now it is to me anyway, maybe you don't agree, but I just like the build quality and the metal features on this. All those buttons on there are metal, not sort of plastic caps on them. Everything's got a really solid clunk to it. On the back I've got standard phono, so I can just plug it straight in my equipment. Let's just put a tape in it. I haven't plugged it into my amp, but we just want to see how it works. You can see the machine lights up and starts playing the tape immediately. I can move between programs with that big clunk sound. Now the fast forward button fast forwards at only twice normal speed but it's too much for this tape it's pulled it apart out of the metal splice. That's a common problem and I'll show you how I repair that later on. But I'll plug the 8 track into my amp and system now and let's play something back on it. I'm going to play back Lionel Richie Can't Slow Down. This is the most recent up to date 8 track album I've got from 1983. Now the problem with this is I'm going to have to talk over this a little bit because I don't want YouTube doing a content match and then flagging me up as some kind of pirate. So sorry about the fact that you can't really listen to this very well, uh, but it's just one of those things. Anyway, as far as I'm concerned, it works fine. As you can hear, I can jump between the programs and it sounds pretty good. Now let's put uh, Michael Jackson in there and just have a listen to that for a second. didn't sound half bad. There's a lot of richness and body to the sound, although there is noticeable hiss that's present throughout, but you only really pick up on it during the quiet parts of each track. Now there is another problem with some 8-track cartridges. Have a listen to this drum beat and see if you hear another track being played in the background. Yes, sometimes the tape won't align perfectly with the head and you'll hear a bit of leak through from the next track and then there's other tapes which are a little bit worse. But you shouldn't judge an 8-track by its cover or its awful shade of green because this one sounds pretty good. Now it's 
time to record my own 8-track mixtape. Now this particular recorder does have manual level input control, but it's also got an auto level control, which if you press that it'll get all the tracks sounding just about right. I've put in my brand new 90 odd minute 8-track cartridge there. We've got a choice of recording just one of those programs, or all of them from beginning to end, or just doing them round and round again for some reason. I'm doing the end one where it just records the whole cartridge and then stops. I've got a 90 odd minute playlist in my Sonos ready, playing it into the back of the recorder. I thought it'd be quite interesting to put on some music from just the last 12 months or so, because that just seems a little bit unusual to be able to record a brand new 8 track with 2013 music into it. After 92 minutes it stops, it reaches the end of the tape, and then the next morning I put the cartridge back in the player to have a listen to it. And it sounded great, better than many of the pre-recorded cartridges I've got. Now let's try fixing that cartridge I broke earlier on when I fast forwarded it and it came apart at the join. Now I'm sure most people would just throw this away, but with a bit of time and patience it can be brought back to life. Now 8-Track Avenue supply a little kit which will repair most of the problems with most 8-Tracks. First off, get inside your 8-Track, take out the sponge, you'll notice that it'll crumble like this one does in the fingers. This has happened to pretty much every cartridge I've opened, all the sponges seem to have disintegrated. Clean off that piece of plastic, get one of the supplied sticky back pieces of sponge, and just stick it to the piece of plastic. So your sponge is repaired, but obviously this isn't what we got into the cartridge for. We were repairing that break in the tape. So once that's in place, we can then move on to fixing the tape. First off, cut out the bit in the middle that was holding the metal splice. So we've got two clean pieces of tape. We're not deleting any part of the recording here, by the way. There's always a gap around that splice where there's nothing recorded. It's just silence. They supply the sticky back bits of uh, metallic stuff here which will just go on the tape if you just do it gently you can get both pieces of tape held together by that and it's as good as new again so it's just a matter of putting the tape back inside the cartridge making sure it's nice and tight in there and then putting the cartridge back together so let's try out the tape And let's see how it gets past the splice that I just put together. So the jobs are good and Well that encouraged me to go and have a look at another one of my cartridges, my most recent one, the Lionel Richie one. Had a look inside that and sure enough even on that cartridge, which is not that old I suppose, well 30 years, um, the sponge in that has crumbled. So it looks like every single 8-track that you buy you're going to need to replace that little part there which is a nuisance because that means you're going to have to buy a load of those sponges and also know how to take your cartridges apart without breaking them so really that's a bit of a pain in the neck. However this does mean that Lionel lives to dance on another ceiling another day. Now believe it or not, there are still some sealed 8-tracks available on eBay, but even unwrapping one of these I found that the sponge had fallen off the little metal section there. So the fact that the cartridge has been sealed up all that time is still no guarantee that it's going to play perfectly on your machine, and will need repairing. Then again, I suppose that's what happens if you put something in shrink wrap and leave it there for 40 years. So there isn't much fun with 8-tracks sometimes, in fact I got this Robert Palmer album, the first one he recorded, it was with the meters on backing, I wanted to have a listen to it, put it in the machine and it made some sort of terrible sound like the tape was getting all chewed up. I had a look inside the cartridge and the tape had all fallen off the reel in the middle and got wrapped around somehow. I tried to repair it and this is what happened. Now believe it or not, there is a solution to this problem and that's to go on iTunes and just download the album. It's cheaper, it's quicker, and it sounds better. And there is another issue when it comes to collecting 8-tracks, and that's that they generally look pretty tatty. Occasionally you'll find a really nice looking one that's uh, brand new in the box and plays perfectly. But more often than not, you'll get them where all the paper's bubbled up on the label. I think they must have used bad glue on them or something, but it seems to be whatever year you buy, you'll find this same problem. Some of them come in these slip cases, which stops the tape getting damaged, but more often than not, people have thrown those away, just kept the cartridge. But you can't always blame people, because some of them didn't even come with a proper slip case in the first place. It's not all doom and gloom, though. 
where else do you go if you want a disco version of the Superman theme? Or a disco version of the Jaws 2 theme? So there is some fun to be had, and I really do like that recorder I bought. I think it's a beautiful piece of kit. The way it's put together is brilliant. It's just nice to get something brand new from the 1970s that works perfectly. It looks really nice at night as well, and I like recording my own 8-tracks on it. It's fun to play the latest hits on an 8-track. I'm even prepared to live with the hiss of the 8-track, or the fact that the albums are all rearranged and some of the tracks are split in half. I think that's actually quite charming. One thing I don't like, though, is the price of the blanks. The blank cartridges are very expensive and hard to find. Also, the pre-recorded albums on eBay initially look quite cheap, but because I'm importing a lot of them from the US, the price of the postage is prohibitive. Most of the cartridges you get tend to look really quite bad. They don't stack nicely on a shelf, they're not a nice display item. Virtually every one you buy will need to have some sort of repair job on it, and not every fault can be repaired. So I suppose given the fact that the sound quality isn't that great and all the other issues that come along with the cartridge, it's probably not worth the effort. So I suppose Young MC really did know what he was on about after all. So that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.